right out of the gate, your character, Weston Jeffries, makes no effort to hide his true colors. He's <clears> someone <throat> who makes quite an impactful entrance and those actions put a dark cloud over the rest of the film. What's mm -hmm. interesting to me about those first few minutes of the film is after he shoots up the town saloon, he walks out as if it's a regular Tuesday. Even upon hearing the deputy ask to, to give it up, he, he laughs to himself. He's unfazed by anyone trying to play hero. He shoots that person and hums a little tune while exiting town. He He's very much someone who would, I don't know, uh, roast some marshmallows over a, a world on fire. Obviously, <laughs> he's a very nasty person, and we see a lot more of that along the journey. But <laughs> what, what was your entry point into understanding Weston's thinking was it that opening was it a particular line of dialogue his get up or some interaction or nonverbal moment that gave you the best sense of who this person is and how he holds the attention of the room yeah I think there were a few a few points that I kind of I don't know focused in on when I was trying to decide this guy you know because I feel like everyone even the darkest most psychopathic characters people have some kind of weakness somewhere mm -hmm. and i thought it's such a strong entrance to the film <laughs> that he just kind of murders like seven people and then rides off singing a song so it's like where is this how far can this guy go and where does he start to falter and there's a scene with <clears throat> his father mm -hmm. um where for me that's the scene that kind of explains why western is the way he is Right. There's this kind of overbearing nature that his father, this grasp that his dad has on him. And, you know, you've seen him. He's a complete killer. But why does he have this? Where's that block coming in? And I think it's just that generational kind of trauma thing that's set in for these guys that, you know, would have... There's people like this at the time that had all kinds of problems going on and this horrendous upbringing. Um so it was for me that was something I kind of linked to to try and at least empathize with him as much as I could because you know I wanted to play this guy as truthfully as I possibly could and kind of relate to him in some way obviously I'm not a murderer right, I right. promise um but like just figuring out those slightly more emotional moments for him where he does show he does falter in that complete sternness and you know psychopathic nature that he has and I think that scene with his dad was one of those for me really to to enter that point of view yeah he's he's very unpredictable and and mm. that makes him incredibly scary from from the way that you deliver the lines as him the way he pushes people out of the way when he's in the bar or violently slams them down on things do you allow the unpredictability of him as a character to more or less steer your approach to how, how to the character as a performer yeah for sure i mean <clears throat> when i i mean day one i think day one for me on set was that big that one shot that opens the film with the, the murders and the and all of that as i walk out and we did i think we did 15 takes of that and it was my first day on set with vigo behind the camera and everything so it was like it was a lot of pressure and it was a lot of like oh my God, how am I going to get this right? I have to make sure I do this in one shot. You know, I go to reload the gun. All the marks have to be here. It was a very technical first day for me. Mm -hmm. But after that, we got through it. And I remember seeing the the shot on the monitor and thinking, looking at how brilliant the shot looked. I think there was a part of me that eased into him a bit more after that, which meant that when I was playing around with these scenes, either when I was rehearsing it before or even on set sometimes, i again, feel that unpredictability of this character and kind of go with something that I thought maybe worked for it. Or maybe I would start an idea and Vigo would come and say, yeah, great, let's build on this. Let's make this scene about this. Like he does this in this scene. So we had a, there was a fair chance to play around with him, like, and his nature, um, which is really interesting. And kind of learning about the character as you go on is, just kind of just as interesting and just as helpful as when you first start to like tackle how you might play the part um 
yeah, it was just it was a learning process overall, the whole thing, um, which I feel kind of yeah, it fits into the that style anyway. Do you kind of like lose your mind a little bit in in the thought that? you yourself are putting on a persona, you're putting on Weston Jeffries, mm -hmm. but also Weston Jeffries is putting on personas for people to kind of appear normal in some certain situations when he's interacting with people. Like he's trying to, at least at one point, really try to put on this like, oh, he's approachable, but yeah. there's still yeah. something that's a little left of center. So like what, what kind of goes into that, that thought of that layering to him? Well, yes. Well, funnily enough for that specific, if I think, I think I know the scene that you're talking about when he comes, it comes up to the house delivering, right. you know, manure and stuff to the farm. And he, because we knew in terms of editing that the film was going to be laid out, you'd seen the horrors that he could commit beforehand. Mm -hmm. Um, then going into this scene because we knew the audience would have known about what he can do it's playing that moment with vivienne completely kind of genuine kind of brought an even weirder kind of tone to him because it's like i used to be genuinely like and i was playing this like i'm genuinely a nice guy today because i feel good and that's something in his psyche that would switch every now and then but for the audience knowing where he's come from because of the way the time scale is like kind of laid out in the movie it's just completely weird to watch i feel like seeing that genuineness and seeing how manipulative he can be um yeah just kind of deepened his <laughs> this like psychopathic nature that he has yeah how did you feel about the other than your presence on the film because i would say that the decibel level go goes up quite a bit when you're on the screen but the rest of the film is quite, you know, quiet. It allows mm -hmm. us to kind of, you know, take in the atmosphere, feel the emotions that everyone may be feeling. And I feel like Vigo, as a storyteller, doesn't want to shape something that feels entirely familiar. Like he wants to put those beats in there, you know, working within, you know, this Western kind of vibe. But mm -hmm. there's because of that quietness, that poeticness, the way that even when it comes down to the main confrontation between y'all, it doesn't play out in this like big Hollywood kind of way. And when mm -hmm. I spoke to Vigo, I kind of compared it to like, you know, No Country for Old Men, Cormac McCarthy, which obviously yeah. he has a history with. And so I'm just kind of curious what that approach did for you and seeing the rest of the film play out with the scenes that you're not in. And did it, do you see it kind of shaking up your trajectory to the art that you create and the projects you chase? Well, I don't know if it necessarily shakes up my trajectory. I mean, I don't think, I obviously think of my part in the film as just, uh, you know, as a part in the film, as as a whole, kind of drive, helping drive this story forward that is ultimately Vivian's story. Um, but it was interesting to see the calmness and I would go to set sometimes on the on days when I wasn't filming and I saw how much like how serene it was when I wasn't there. So it was like, or when my character wasn't there, I was I was fine. And so I was I was a joy. But like, yeah, it was it was interesting seeing those other scenes with so much with all that calm and serenity and this, you know, beautiful locations and stuff. And knowing I guess it was just when my character was on screen, there was I think the reason was just to always have this kind of uncertainty. You never knew where this was going to go with him. You know, even when he was being genuine, which kind of comes back to that reason why they put the first kind of horrific scene in the film with me at the top, because then you never know where it's going to go with him. So even though the scene before I enter could be super chill, super calm, like just a very casual meal at the table, the minute you see Weston on screen, it's like okay what's gonna happen like how's it gonna go is everyone gonna end up dead you never know um so just mixing up the the tempo of the film like that i think was i think it was vigo's goal from the beginning for sure yeah yeah i know we're just about out of time so in these last minute that we have curious what has been 
perhaps the most interesting piece of direction that you may have got for him, got from Vigo, or even just some nugget of wisdom that you see yourself kind of carrying with you going forward? Man, I think, again, it was that that first scene that we shot on day one, where it was one shot, I had a lot of action to do. Um, and he came to me and I was after take four, five, six, maybe, and he was like, hey, man, just, like, take your time with it, one step at a time. Think of it as individual little beats rather than trying to fit this whole thing into one shot. Mm -hmm. And it did immediately just kind of went, oh yeah, okay, cool, I can take my time. It can, with the character as well, it makes sense for him to just do things slowly at his own pace. He's not in a rush. It doesn't matter that he's killed six people. It's like, he just kind of took his time with it. And that really helped me.